All right, you ready? I don't know. How do you feel about it? I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I've, I feel. Are you more hungover than last week or less hungover? I'm, I'm, I actually, I feel less because I'm, I'm certain I'm still drunk. <laughs> This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned in to episode 45 of The Real Word. Word up. You know Tom Tool? I'm going to talk about Tom a lot. Yeah. This episode, because I'm coming off a 48 hour stint with Tom. Oh, gosh. You know? Okay. He said to a group full of about 100 people mm -hmm. in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where we were over the weekend, mm -hmm. where I was, not you. But, um, I'm already falling asleep. He said to the whole room, mm -hmm. he said, Byron, your and Nicole's show, The Real Word, is the best right now in the entire real estate industry. Wow. Tommy. I I mean, that's nice. He even mentioned you. What did he By say? By name. What did he? Well, well you I know, mean. He's, he's had, white. Is I think you complained about Tom not mentioning you before, so. Well, that's because when we first started the show, he was throwing out a question. He was throwing questions out to Byron. So Tom Tool from Philly, Thanks, big Tom. ups to. If you that don't know Tom, him. look him up. That's Tool with an E at the end. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Main topic: Redfin unveils its new unveils unveils Vails? Ness. Ness is my um my unveils. Writer. She's gonna. It's not unveils. I mean, I'm not a writer, and I know that. <laughs> unveils <laughs> the their new estimate tool. Yeah, it's so this fun. is a tool where a seller can get an estimate on their home before they go to market. Obviously, mm -hmm. the market's going to tell you what your home's actually worth. Right. But this is a tool to get an estimate so that you can figure out where you might want to price your home. Right. Or if it's the right time to sell. So they're like stepping it up a notch here because um, all the other iBuyers that we're seeing, um, obviously you like you put something in and they you spit they spit back an offer. Right. Um, this situation though is actually putting a lot more work on the actual homeowner because what it's doing is it's sending the homeowner 25 comparable properties and then the homeowner is then picking. Really? Sorry about that. Wow. Hmm. And then um, the homeowner's picking five of their favorites, and then they're also adding in all of their updates. I, in my opinion, feel like this would be, I'm curious to see how it goes down. I kind of want to try it, because I feel like it's it's going to be a little misleading to the seller. They're, it's giving the seller almost too much power. And they have to narrow down to the five best one. And so, right. any, and they're putting in like, you know, there's some bat kitchens that have been updated for 100G, yeah. and it really is not that great. And, so. and there's always emotions that get, when you're yeah. dealing with the seller directly, there's emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you could be literally sitting in a neighborhood where every house looks the same, and there will be a seller that looks you straight in the face and be like, nobody in this entire town has what we have right here. I, I'm, you know that, I'm right? pretty Nicole, certain like, I hear that line like, like every nobody, time I sit. Their house is the best. Like you, can't, you can go throughout the entire state, Nicole, and you can't find what we have. Right. right? Like you're going to hear that over and yeah. over again. Right. Despite the fact that every single house in the neighborhood is a four bed, two and a half uh, bath colonial, right? Mm -hmm. So so there's going to be that little bit of emotion. But, if, but I think this works really well if a seller – is objective about the process mm -hmm. and they say i'm really going to narrow down the five mm -hmm. best sales and if they're within the last six months remember an appraisal my uh you know cma any market analysis that i do mm -hmm. is all an opinion of value right and i believe that the seller's opinion of value is just as important and should be in you know sh should be included in the conversation with the appraiser mm -hmm. and and the agent i think mm -hmm. that it's a valid data point i think mm -hmm. they know their home really really well really well and i do believe that with all the technology that's that's here mm -hmm. not coming but that's mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. it's going to get easier and easier for a seller to get down to the number of what their house is worth without an agent meaning an agent really needs to have value in other places marketing the transaction the process connecting the dots the community that whole thing are you going to give are you going to give Vanessa yes yeah that's a that's we got signals fun. now on the real word. We got like Ness. 
<laughs> baseball singles. Because Byron baseball, thinks that he says season. the most incredible I just things, said, and he wants just, to make sure that it's captured. It's that, and it's let's like, capture that. That's Nicole will say something now, and then we'll just move on to the, to the <laughs> wrap it. All right? I think I've already said what I had to say. Um, I do. I think it's. I think it's great that the the homeowner is getting involved in it. It's just going to be super interesting on those that you know, because they're going to obviously argue like, but I picked five of the twenty five that you right. gave me, and I gave you the information on the when updates that I made, and you told. Thing, me yeah, yeah that like you know you're you're i want to call it the ren summit i wonder what the it's Redfin S- no they don't yeah. have a name i'm gonna make i'm gonna name it the ren summit yeah you, you know your number was this and now you're telling me it's not so again they could be they could be up against something there too when they're actually sitting down with these sellers and giving them real numbers based on what they're seeing so it'll be interesting but i think i mean and as I mean, long if you're a seasoned experienced agent that data point that the seller provides, like, hey, I went through this process, here's what I what I came up with, it, all it does is put you on second base to have the conversation to say, hey, these were really three good comps that you picked. Right. Here's why these two, right. in my experience, may not be the best comps, and, and then you work through it from there. So I, I think it's actually a, an easy opportunity for an experience right. uh, or, or knowledgeable. It doesn't have to be an experience. It could be a knowledgeable. I feature. think what I love the most about it, though, too, because in, in most situations, I know which sellers want to sell and which sellers like like want to sell. You know, like that I think want to sell and then want to get this number well, and then they'll sell. Right, right. Because obviously if they're, you know, if they're super realistic about the number and pull the right numbers, you know that those people want to sell That's and understand point. the market. So I think you can also go into that meeting with a completely different strategy based on what p- comps they pulled, what number they got based on what you really think it is. Because you're going to be, you're going to be obviously arguing two very different arguments walking into that. That's just thing. Can you see the timestamps over there? Yeah. That'd be good. Like, you know, I think Nicole had some... some oh, we're stamping? <laughs> now we're time stamping. <laughs> Just what? We'll talk about that after. All right. Racket number one. Ooh, it's like, it's always so toasty in here. Yeah, when you're hungover, it gets toasty I'm quick. I'm hungover. Racket number one. I'm ready. Which one? Jay Thompson, Ugh. formerly of Zillow. Jay just retired uh, maybe a couple of months ago, so mm-hmm. congrats on that. But he's already resurfacing back in the real estate industry Yeah. on his blog, which is called nowpondering.com. We'll link it up as always. Jay wants to know to write or not to write that a is the question. Zillow haters guide. Do you think a guy like Jay, who's retired from Zillow, who was an advocate, by the way, on every online portal that you ever went to, whether it was Labco, whether whether it was Inman, no matter where it was, it was just people hating on Zillow. Mm-hmm. He was community outreach for Zillow for, mm-hmm. for years. He would jump into those comments. He would defend Zillow often very, you know, all the way, you know, 50, 60 comments. He would, he would go back and forth mm-hmm. in his defense of Zillow or at times just explaining or providing information. Do you think a guy like Jay, who's now retired, Mm -hmm. should stay out or should he produce content like this? So where I have the hardest problem with all of this, I actually, just reading the article actually just makes me want him to go even deeper into retirement. I'm not going to lie. I'm really sorry. He stuck up for us in our first real world ever. I love you. My problem here is is he's like, he wants wants his, our opinion. First of all, I, I feel like once you ask the opinion, like, don't ask for the opinion because I, but then he goes on to say that he'd rather have his like toes in the sand and blue ocean. That's a lie, Jay. I, so like I, I, I'm, and, and he'll only do it if he gets enough positive. I just feel like if you were just to write it and produce it, people will naturally come. They'll naturally want to hear about it. But now that you're thrown out there that you're like at the beach and you'd rather be at the beach than write it, I just, I have a whole, I, I feel like the whole article's a racket, the topic's a racket. And because what I'll of say, the article, what I feel I'll say like is just, a racket. You wouldn't have wrote this blog, Jay, if you if you didn't have the itch to kind of get back in a little bit and want to start talking yeah. some real estate. What I'll say is not a racket. Is you, my friend, voicing your thoughts and opinions in the industry? I've always I want to hear about it. I do, but once the article came out, you're just sort of like, yeah. You, you throw a wet whatever. blanket on it. Kinda. I think, Jay, you, you provide a lot of value. Not to say that you're going to be right 100% of the time. Not to say that we're ever, you know, Never right, right 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, we set up this show so that we could just be, you know, kind of in the middle and not be right or wrong. Except for me. I'll be right. 40, 44 and 0 is the record I'm, I'm going for. If this was a debate, 
Uh, but no, Jay, I think I think I'm looking forward to your blog. I hope you do it. Yeah, um, I do too. I do. But there's a lot, and and he goes. through I feel it. like he needs to take this article down because I just I got a bad taste in my mouth after I read it. I'm like, meh. Jay, you've always had a lot of haters, so you know how to deal with them. <laughs> if Nicole's one of them, which she's not, um, I'm not a hater. You'll know how to deal with that. So I'm looking forward to more content. Love to hear uh, the feedback from you guys. If you think Jay yeah. should come back and be writing on Zillow, or are you just simply worn out on Zillow. Um, are, yeah, are I guess, worn out I guess I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear the topics. Yeah, I mean, Zestimate certainly is going to be a big topic. People are, are passionately, I mean, this is why Greg started the whole Stop Zillow thing. They're right. passionately against the Zestimate, Where which ties into the, to the main topic. We're talking about Redfin. Everybody's going to have an estimate tool, guys. This isn't, yeah. this isn't stopping at Zillow. Everybody's going to have one. They're going to get better and better. And oh, by the way, those tools online, as we go into you know you know deeper into the to technology are going to be just as accurate as an agent right i mean in all honesty these things are really more like lead generators than anything else and, so there's and i think always some of these be lead generators. i just believe some of these tools because because zillow's been around now long enough where you know what most of your neighbor's houses sold for you don't need the mls for that information right. you put another five ten years compounding on that uh i just think that these tools are going to i think that agents are going to be using these tools they're going to get that good so. Some agents might, based on some of their list prices. All right. Um, racket number two. I love it. Come you on, say read this it. One? Nope, you could do it. Do it. We're going with the craziest realtor confessions of all oh, time. Oh, well, you missed the first line. Vibrator, sex, and death. That is the name of the article, which we'll link up. Can you not say it? This is a Leslie. I just. I, you, know? you know? You're afraid? Vibrator, sex, and there death. There it is. Death. There it is. Leslie Delush, uh, Delusa Delusha, wrote the probably. article. Yeah. I know some peeps in this article. The first one I want to bring you're awesome. up. I was hanging out with Glenda I know you're Baker so cool. of BHHS this past weekend in, in Chattanooga. Big ups to Glenda. And big ups to Doug, uh, by the way, who opened up his Wait, office Wait, where were you again? I don't think people know. Where were you? Chattanooga. Right. Nuga. Yep. Tennessee. How many times? Eh, a couple more. Yes. That's not, that's, don't, n no hand signals for that one. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Glenda literally, and I wish I saw the article before I saw you, Glenda. I'm going to see you in, in another week, so uh, I will be asking the question. Um, Glenda literally sold the wrong house one time. Yeah, I don't And even... if anybody in, in the world can pull this off, she's the person that can pull well, this off. Well, it sounds off. like she did. It sounds so like she... the buyer was psyched. So, so the buyer but like, was... In all honesty, though, the buyer didn't go to the house. He didn't do anything. He didn't do a walk. I mean... Did nothing. It, so, so bought the house sight unseen in a really fancy area of Atlanta. Buckhead is, is a super fancy mm. area. So clearly saw value in, an, in a neighborhood that maybe w w was... was um, everybody was you know, uh, renovating that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, I'm just, it's so confusing. So they went to the house to yeah. do a, a demo and, and Glenda gets involved in a lot of these high-end demo projects uh, for herself and, and mm -hmm. with clients. Mm -hmm. And the buyer says, this isn't the house I bought. Yeah, I, I don't even know how that happens. And so she, she is a super agent too. She hops out of the car and sold the deal as if it was a better house, and she says it was, than well, the one he actually bought. He she had no psyched. other choice. I mean, he bought the house. It was his. He was super psyched, and it sounds like it all worked out for him. So that was interesting. Any of the, any of on this list that were interesting to you? Well, no. I mean, they're all – obviously, everyone has a story. I guess I'm trying to – is this a racket? I don't think it's a racket. I think it's just sort of fun to hear agent stories. Do you have a story? Is that why we're – is this yeah, why – Yeah, no, do you have a story? I don't have a story. You have nothing. No. I don't. I, I, there was one one um, time, though, it was probably maybe two years ago, um, that we were on, um, there were like a, a bunch of, so I was on a different team, obviously, and we decided that we were going to do like a team tour. Like, let's go look at all of our inventory. Let's okay. just like refresh. Touring them. the listings. We were going to be touring all the listings. It was, a, we took a full day. It was probably the biggest waste of time, but we did it. We went through all the homes as, as a group. Um, but one house at the very end of the day, we decided, okay. okay, like let's just skip that house. We're we're really exhausted, whatever. Um, and it's a good thing that we did um, because, I, I, well, never mind. I don't even know if we. You can... can't do that. You can't go all the way through the story and never mind it. Yeah, what no. Happened? Well, the homeowner had passed away, so oh. yeah, so we would have. It was something. It was kind of like weird. It was sort of one of those like, okay, like guys, be done. Like we all at the same time were sort of like, mm. Mm. yeah. There was like this, but we did. So we didn't walk into well, the situation. Well, this but. is a crazy one here. 
this lady, some divorce and death action. She had a divorcing couple. They couldn't agree on anything. The wife moved out. The husband was still living in the house. The agent got an offer. Obviously, the husband who was living in the house wanted to stay because he was living in the, house. Was living in the house. So the, the wife clearly wanted to take the offer. Uh, a couple of weeks went by. You know, you get that offer. You can't get anyone to agree. So the offer is probably dead to some degree or almost dead. Well, then he dies. She probably cut the gas line. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get into any investigation here, but the housekeeper finds the dude. He's dead. The agent calls like, hey, you know, after the funeral, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about what we want to do. And the wife is like, we ain't going to talk. I want to take that offer yeah. now. I don't want to lose the offer. Um, I, I think that that's not a racket. I think that's completely legitimate when you're in a business transaction folks you've got to take the emotions out of it you do, yeah but there are 10 so easy 10 or so crazy uh cr crazy Sex realtor toys stories and confessions we're gonna link that up knocking the boots and a listing here's another fun one racket number three okay what are we on oh gosh Okay. The, the he new... was texting us all weekend Not about all weekend. this. I texted you one text. Did he? No, it was multiples. It was uh, mul you tagged me. You tagged me. You tagged me on Instagram because they were leading up to it. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a few. Yeah, they were leading up to it. You're right. Yes. They, they did you, some you... hype promotion. This is over 20,000 views. It was only published on October 4th. We're going to link up the YouTube video. Oh, it's that old? Oh, no. October, October 4th. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm totally. 20,000 views. The Tim Smith Group. In California, clearly Newport Beach. This listing is Newport Beach. Uh, a little play on the song Teach Me How to Dougie. They have done a music video for their listing, Teach Me How to Duffy. What I want to know. We're talking a lot about songs. I know. For we, listings. And you uh, yeah. think it's the hokiest thing, but all you do is talk about that. I think it's hokey. I think the other one was hokey. I think that this one's hokey. But I will say. This was one of the first listing videos I've ever seen. He actually said it was the greatest listing video ever. I have it in a text. We should probably flash that up stick, on the screen. And I'm going to stick by that, Tim. You've got the greatest listing video ever now of wow. all time. Now, of all time. Now, with that. Of all time. With that hmm. comes a little bit of criticism. I'm going through your YouTube comments. And you're catching some heat. You're catching some heat in my office, by the way. Jill thought the video was. Oh, yeah. She did a side text to me she, wanting me to agree with her. She did not like the white boy flavor um, in the video. Yeah. Whatsoever. So I thought, I thought the editing was sick. I thought the editing I was sick. I really enjoyed. It was probably the last maybe 45 seconds. Oh, it's it's a four minute. So maybe it was the last minute or it's minute a and a half. It's a music video. Yeah. Instead I, of teach me editing, how to Dougie, it's teach me how to Duffy. The editing was sick. The 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 beat is good. I mean, like the, the, the words are video. good. But I guess I, I guess where I fall down is um, I feel like it was more of a promotional video than it was a listing video. You got like. Smart. Probably these, got like, Duffy high to sponsor school kids, it. Like kids like partying in a backyard of this home i'm not so certain that i'd go out and buy the home i don't know that's I would, me i would imagine the dougie guy the artist here the the um teach me how to dougie artist probably made more from duffy on this promotional listing video Maybe. than they've made since their last hit single teach me how to dougie i guess i would need to actually i haven't seen teach me how to dougie they're yet. literally in the video and tim has a little cameo towards the end of the video if you know tim smith he's one of the most powerful um luxury brokers in the country uh, and I love his. It was fun. Uh, it was fun. It was part. a fun video. I don't think it's it going to sell the house, but no, like anything. Thinking fun... that thinking that a oh, listing no, I, video. Oh no, we talk about it all the time. Yeah, I just I, I feel like there wasn't enough of in of, of the house. It's I not going to sell the house, but does it get the attention that Tim needs to get the right person through the door? It certainly could do that. There's no debating that. Already. I want to buy a Duffy though. I mean, oh, I, those I think Duffy that boats? was my, that was my text back. I'm like, I don't know. All I want is I want a one of these boats. Never I want get, a boat. Never get you off that. They're like Duffy. A, they're like they're like they're like low riders. Yeah, you'd be on I the like Duffy it. all day in the summer. I well, or any time really. Could you fit your popcorn machine on that Duffy? Oh well, I'd bring yeah. the popcorn machine for you. I love popcorn. You do like popcorn. Any comments, please, please, please drop them in the comment feed, whether you're on Facebook right now, IG, YouTube. Certainly subscribe up to YouTube. Um, you know, that's on our One and Company YouTube page. So please uh, do that if you haven't already. We so just, is this a racket? I think it's a racket. I think it's not a racket in the not sense that he's doing what we all should be doing and getting attention. 
uh, for his cellar. In so some way or it's other. interesting though. But that people you are say ripping that him because saying, I keep on wanting to do like music I'm not with saying, you. Yes, you want Nicole wants to do a I music do. video. I'm not he saying doesn't. You're like eh, but all we I do think, every episode we talk about another team, agent doing music. I think and the you're, team. I think the team should do it. I think that. I would have to have a really small role in it. I mean, this is my style of video. I can't be fun like that. I, I just can't do well, it. Well, you don't like fun. I can't do it. You're like allergic to it. Yeah. Hmm. So, All right. Mark that one down. Drop us a comment and please, please subscribe and like it up. We're coming back next week for some more Real Word. Bye, guys.